Shalom and welcome back to Life in Divine Ministries here in Columbus, Ohio. Connecting people to the true source of life, John 15, 1 through 7. My name is Gianna Stewart and as always, we are so excited to have you join us again today as we together receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save our souls. Yahov 1.21, James 1.21. Hallelujah. I just love when I say that. I love when I read it. It gives us hope. We realize that we're not wasting our time as we engage Yeshua HaMashiach, as we engage Adonai through his word. Worship through the word of God. Alleluia. Amen and amen. So again, before we begin our review of Lesson 59, let us open in a word of prayer. Avina Malkino, our Father and King, we declare your name. We exalt your name above every principality, every power, and every dominion. We declare in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach that you and you alone are Echad. And we bless you, we laud you with our praises, we laud you with our worship, and we thank you for the Ruach HaKadosh, who leads and guides us into all truth. Hallelujah. B'Shem Yeshua, Amen and Amen. Glory to God. Well, Lesson 59 ended with our discussion of Boykum's commentary notes on 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1, 5. In today's lesson, we will continue our study and his commentary notes on verse 5 of 2 Peter 1. We invite you to go to our YouTube link that you see here on the screen. That way you can review Lesson 59 in its entirety. With that said, that brings us to our lesson for today. So let's get started. So we ended our last lesson on page 185 of Boykin's commentary notes with his discussion of pistas occupying first place in the list of what he calls Christian ethics in the scripture references that we see here on the screen. If you were with us our last time, we did look at 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1 5, and 2 Timothy 3 10. <speaking in Hebrew> Te aga te te I'm sorry aga fe aga pe te hippomone. We looked at this verse and we shared that pise pis pis te te ma ruth u me a te agape agape te hapomone faith patience love endurance is the Christian ethical list, as we see in the, the verse here, with Pistis as the beginning point and being translated in English as faith. We also discussed the second part of Boykum's commentary note on page 185, which discusses his point that the knowledge of Messiah is by faith, by Pistis. And we learned that it should be noticed that although the list of virtues, from what we learned from Boycom, that although the list of virtues, virtues includes terms highly characteristic of Hellenistic ethics, as we read in his notes, we learned that the whole list is given a specifically Christian character, Boycom's terms, by the position of Pistis by the position of faith at the head of the list. Boykin also states that by representing faith, Pistis, as the root 
of all virtues, he shared with us that the writer is that the writer of Second Petro is illustrating what he, the writer, said in verse three. What we did to help us to put all of this together, we went back and reviewed what we have learned in verse three of Second Peter. We encourage you to visit the link on the screen for the complete teaching from this lesson. That way you can get all of what we discussed in detail. And his notes on 2 Peter 2.11, or tos ga pusios epikorege satei, he mean he es sodos es tin ai on neon basil e on to curio curio he mon kai so ter os le su Christu. We looked at that verse as well, English, Greek, interlinear of that. In this way for richly will be supplied to you the entrance into the eternal kingdom of the Lord of us and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. We discuss that as well in detail, and we invite you to go visit our YouTube page. We discuss that in Lesson 54. That way you can get the uh, continuum discussion from the previous lessons up to this one to help us to understand what Borkham, Boykham presented to us in our current commentary notes for this uh, verse in Second Peter 1 5. So we would encourage you to visit our page. That way you can go back and catch up, as we all say, with where we were. And if you were with us, maybe just for review, you can go back to those pages. So with that said, this brings us to our lesson for today. This research lesson for today is this earlier Richard Boykin's discussion of the Greek clause epikorege sate in te piste himontin aret a of verse 5. Our study today is on the Greek word aret a in the clause. So what we'll do now is we're going to read the commentary note on page 185 of Boykin's commentary notes in his book. If you're just joining us, we are studying through this book, the Word Biblical Commentary, Jude, Second Peter, Richard J. Boykin, and we are still on page 185. We're studying again, and let me just grab my marker here, the, the Greek word within the phrase here, R and A, which is a dative feminine singular noun here in the verse. Let me just get rid of this marker. So we'll go ahead now and we will read the commentary note. I do want to make a note. What we thought we would do this time in this particular commentary, we're, I'm just going to read the very first part of the commentary and not read the whole thing. I think what we'll do is we'll break it up like into sections and then discuss each section as we go of the commentary note, just so we won't put a lot in one lesson for us to try to digest at one time. So I'm reading now from page 185 in just the first portion of, um, to remind you. R at A, translated in English as virtue, appears in Christian list of virtues only in Philippians 4 A. In parenthesis, he has a strongly Hellenistic catalog and in the Hermas, the sh the shepherd mandates, which he lists here as another reference, 12, 3 through 1. He also states, but is found in pagan catalogs of virtues, and he lists Votul tu gin ud la seter kata. Let me get that last part correctly. Kata logu which is here, as he states, a pagan catalog of virtues. And he lists that on page 91 of that pagan uh, list. 
So what we'll do now is we're just going to work through this part of what we've just read here. And we've talked about Christian ethical lists during our discussion of Borkham's discussion on the Greek word pistis, translated in English as faith. Remember, he talked to us and we learned that RNA appears in um, the Christian list of virtues virtues as we just learned in Philippians 2.8. Notice here there's a distinction between the Christian list of virtues, Christian list, and then we learned about Christian ethical list when we discuss pistis. Keep that in mind as we are going forward. Again, he says it appears in the Christian list, that being our at A of virtues only in Philippians 2.8, and he makes a note that it is a strongly hedonistic catalog. We'll take a look at that as well. We will not look at today the ancient literature, Hermas the Shepherd Mandates 12 3 through 1, but I encourage you to uh, read it. You can find all of these references that he gives us online, or of course you can go to your library and you can find them as well. Um, so what we did, we did, we looked at a couple of resources for a definition to help us to make our distinction between the uh, Christian virtues and Christian ethical lists. There were many, many, many resources that we could choose from. We did look at a couple. And what we did is we chose a definition that we found that AI kind of compiled from all the various resources that we did look at, and it reads this way. What we're doing, remember, is we're looking at what is the difference between the between Christian ethics, the Christian ethical list, and the Christian virtues list. And it reads, this it being the compilation of all the resources that we found that AI um, came up with for those who wanted kind of a concise definition from all the resources. And it reads, while closely related, a Christian list of virtues is considered a subset of Christian ethics. A Christian list of virtues is considered a subset of Christian ethics, meaning that a list of virtues represents the specific, the specific positive character traits that Christians, well, in my terminology, Messianic disciples strive to cultivate, which are then applied within the broader framework of Christian ethics, which encompasses moral principles and guidelines for living a righteous life. Remember too, some time ago, we talked about walking in the direct, in the way of the Lord. Direct Adonai, direct Adonai, the way of the Lord. And so this is what we're looking at. As you know, we incorporate different terminologies here. Walking in the direct Adonai, the way of the Lord that we read about in the Torah, all the way through the Brit Kadashah. And of course, we learn that it is based on the hold of the scriptures from the Tanakh to the Brit Kadashah. Those are my words. So now let's do this. Let's now take a look at Philippians 4, 8 that we have here on the screen. We do have the Greek toloipon or depoi, hosa estin a lete hosa simna hosa dikhaya. Hagna hosa pras vile uf hima e tis ar et e kai e tis i panos tota logiskethe. Boykin states that r et a virtue that we just talked about appears in Christian lists of virtues only in Philippians 4.8. And then remember that he did say that Philippians 4.8 is a strongly Hellenistic catalog in a catalog. Remember too, and many times, most of the times as we're reading Boykin's note, he always is very careful to help us to understand the Hellenistic influence 
of the, the writing of Second Petro because we learned that this was written in the while well, the Jewish people were, are in the diaspora. And so the writers understood and wrote the 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 Brit Kadashah is written in, in Cornate Greek. So let's just remember that as we move forward. Now, another thing that we learned from our research about Borkham's information provided to us in this commentary note here about Philippians 4.8 being a strongly hedonistic catalog, which I found very interesting to help us as we've been studying to further understand the book, to understand the writing of each book. Here we're looking at Philippians 4.8, that it is a strongly hedonistic catalog which I thought was a very great description that he gave to us to help understand Philippians 4.8. So we went to some, to some resources to find out what does he mean that it is considered a strongly hedonistic, hedonistic catalog. And we found out that Philippians 4.8 by many scholars and, and many um, commentary commentary commentors who do write commentary notes uh, strongly reflect that Philippians 4.8 is considered a strongly Hellenistic catalog because it reflects the influence of Greek philosophical thought. That is very important to us as we continue our study and as Boykin always breaks this down for us. So because it reflects the influence of Greek philosophical thought, particularly the ethical teachings of Stoicism and other Hellenistic philosophies. You might ask yourself now, well, why would the writer of Philippians, you know, use this format to write? Well, it's very interesting that you might ask that because we learned that the verse that we just read in Philippians 4.8, the verse lists virtues that were highly regarded, highly regarded virtues in Greek culture. That's important to us, yes, because we understand that the Jewish people are in the diaspora and they understood Greek and the the Brit Kadashah is written in Koinate Greek. So they understood the philosophy. So the writers of the of the Brit Kadashah knew this as well and wanted to reach the people. The verseless virtues that were highly regarded in Greek culture, culture, such as truth, honor, justice, purity, loveliness, and commendability. And we'll see some of this influence when we look at our English translations that we have here on the screen and the uh, English Greek interlineal translation of the Greek for Philippians 4.8. So these virtues, they, they align very, very closely with the moral ideals promoted by Hellenistic philosophers during that time. And who they emphasize living a virtuous and ethical life. We found out further that Paul's use of this catalog, remember we're talking about, as Borgham stated here in um, his commentary note, that 4.8 is a strongly Hellenistic catalog. So Paul's use of this Hellenistic catalog in his letter to the Philippians, we learned, suggests that he, Paul, Shaul, was engaging with the cultural and philosophical context of his audience, which the writers of the Brit Kadashah did, many of whom would have been familiar with the Hellenistic ideas of the culture. By doing so, we further learn, he, Shaul, was able to communicate Christian ethical teachings in a way that resonated with their existing cultural framework. Now we found this one, I can tell you this, I apologize, I didn't put it on the screen, but we went to www.studylight.org 
commentary on Philippians, and this is where we learn this information from. So that helps us to understand what Boykin was saying is saying to us on page 185 here about Philippians 4:8. Um, another reference that you could go to to get this information that we just shared with you that I read is um, Bible God. I'll spell this O R E M U S dot org, and also had some information here. And this is just a summation of what both of these resources presented in their respective um, resources. Hopefully that was helpful to you for understanding the first part of this. What we want to keep in mind is that as we go through the rest of this uh, portion here on the Greek word RA, we want to be able to grasp the weight, is my word, of this Hellenistic aspect of this catalog of virtues and to remember that there is it is a subset of Christian ethics that we learned about earlier. So hopefully that was it was uh, helpful for you. So what we'll do before we go is let's just look at the uh, Greek English interlineal that we have here on the screen for it. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever vulnerable, whatever right, whatever pure, whatever lovely, whatever admirable, if any excellence, and if any praise, these things think on. And then we also have the two English translations here on the screen for us here that we can look at the NASB. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, think about these things. We also have the net, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of respect, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if something is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. And we can see from, even from the English translation of the Greek, we can see the Hellenistic influence, the philosophical influence of these lists of virtues in the English translation and even in our English Greek interlineal translation. And we'll discuss more about the word itself um, as it relates to being translated in English as excellence versus moral, whether it's moral excellence or human excellence. We'll talk about that in our next two lessons. So hopefully that was helpful for you as we went through just that part of the commentary note for today. That does bring us to the end of part one of lesson 60 for the Greek word RNA, virtue as it appears in Philippians 4, 8, which we learn is a strongly Hellenistic catalog. Boykim always does an excellent job, in my opinion, of bringing out all of the essence and the details that we need to help us to understand the fluidity of the verse. And as we always do before we close, I'll say this before we close, and then let's just read verses 1 through 5 again for contextual understanding and just to bring it all together before we go. I'm just turning the page back there because I'm on a different page. But we will continue in this section of Boykham's commentary notes on R at A our next time together. So before we close, let's just go. I'm going to read the English translation that I have here in Boykham's 
um, commentary note. Of course, you have your own Bible and you can read from your, your Bible. His divine promise, I'm at verse 1, 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1, and I'm at verse 3. His divine power has bestowed on us everything necessary for a godly life through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and might, by means of which he has bestowed on us the very great and precious promises so that through them you may escape the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire and become sharers of his divine nature. For this very reason, make every effort by your faith to produce virtue, by virtue knowledge, by knowledge self-control, by self-control steadfastness, by steadfastness lost my place, by steadfastness knowledge, by knowledge self-control, by self-control steadfastness, I think I'm reading it again, steadfastness, by steadfastness knowledge, by knowledge self-control, by self-control steadfastness, by steadfastness godliness. I think I read that twice. My eye went to the wrong place. I'll read five again. For this very reason, make every effort by your faith to produce virtue by virtue knowledge, by knowledge self-control, by self-control steadfastness, by steadfastness godliness. At least we got verse five. <laughs> My goodness, thank you, Ruach Hagodash, for helping us in our frailties. So again, thank you so much for being with us again. It is our prayer that you learned as much as we did, as much as I learned every time together. And as we always say, one of the things that I've learned from the Messianic Studies Institute, which I'm so privileged to be a part of, the instructors there always teach us, always remember that we are lifelong learners. So we will be learning until the day that Yeshua reappears and establishes his kingdom in Yerushalayim and then we will we will have come to where we're supposed to be so anyway thank you so much for being with us my name is Gianna Stewart here in Columbus Ohio with Life in the Mind Ministries and we will just end this time with a word of prayer This brings us to the end of Lesson 60 in Richard Borgham's discussion of the Greek clause Epikorege Sate in Te Piste Himon Tin Are And we had a great time of discussion. I would like to say myself, I learned so much. Our next time together, we will continue our study in verse 5. But I always like to end by sharing with you. If you would like to know more about Yeshua, his kingdom, and his kingship, we invite you to email us at lifeinthevine at earthling.net. We also invite you to visit our YouTube page, Life in the Vine, Janice Stewart. If you have any questions or you want to know more about MSI, which I always talk about, or if you want to know anything additional to what we've shared, we pray prayerfully ask you to please do not hesitate to connect and contact us. We're here for you. We're here to pray for you, to pray with you, and to answer any questions that you may have. If you'd like to know more about Yeshua and his kingdom and his kingship, please call us and we can connect you with information that you have, pray with you, get you connected so that you can begin to grow and learn about him, his kingdom, and learn the word, study the word of God. So we're here for you. Avina Malkina, our Father and King, we do praise, thank you, glorify your name. Thank you for your engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. We pray by the rule of Kakodash that you will draw those unto you who are designed, desiring to know more about you, your kingdom, and your kingship. We pray in the name of Yeshua, Bishim Yeshua, Amen and Amen. We will see you next time. Again, my name is Janice Stewart here in Columbus, Ohio. 
And this is Life in Divine Ministries, Columbus, Ohio. Shalom.